we see two realities in this section of our text that we probably know on some level, but we need to realize at a deeper level. The first is that ultimately we cannot fully trust in anyone but Jesus Christ. Because there are some places that people either are unwilling or unable to go with us. My husband and kids could not follow me into that operating room. It couldn't be. And there's things that we go through where people are either unable, I mean, they would have wanted to, they wanted to be with me as long as they could, I wanted to be with them as long as they could, but sometimes we're, they're not willing. Think about it, sometimes we're not willing to go places with people. Maybe it's too painful, maybe it's too time consuming, whatever it is, because we're human and we fail. Now this does not mean we shouldn't trust anyone ever, that's not what it's saying. So much of what we've talked about this weekend, so much of what we see in the scriptures, it's about community. We were never meant to live the Christian life alone. And there are people who are trustworthy in our lives that we need to rely on and depend on. But ultimately, it comes down to Jesus. It comes down to him and him alone. And he will never, ever, ever let us down. Ever. He can't let us down. He cannot be unfaithful. It is who he is. The disciples let Jesus down. He was overwhelmed with sorrow. And he's praised. And then he goes back and they are sleeping. Can you imagine how that hurt his heart? And we see from Matthew's version it says that they were sleeping because their eyes were heavy. And, and when I read that, I mean, can you just picture that? Has that ever happened to you? Or maybe you're watching a movie or a show and you really want to see the end of it and you just can't keep your eyes, you just can't. You cannot keep your eyes open. But there was more going on here with the disciples. And we can see that from Luke's version of this story. It says, when Jesus arose from prayer, he went back. He found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. You see, they didn't fall asleep because they didn't care. They fell asleep because they cared too much. They had never seen Jesus that way before. Jesus had never been that way before. Jesus was always in control of his... I'm not saying he was unemotional, but Jesus, we know, and, and this blows me away, but scripture's very clear, that he was not really anything to look at outwardly. Read Isaiah 52 and 53. It talks about he had no majesty, nothing that would attract men to him. He was a plain, ordinary looking man, but he had a presence about him. He was strong. He was powerful. He was in control. He stood up to the authorities. He, every time they tried to outfox him, which I just think is so funny because he's God, he would always turn the tables on them, and suddenly they see him terrified, overwhelmed with sorrow. Think about someone in your life who's been sort of a, a rock to you. I mean, God is our ultimate rock, but praise him. He puts people in our lives who, you know, maybe it's maybe it was your father or your mother. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's your husband. You know, who's, who's just, they're just strong. Now, have you ever seen that person cry or fearful? It shakes you. It's like, wait a minute, you're not supposed to be that way. Don't you think they wanted to make it better? They wanted to help Jesus, and they couldn't. This was overwhelming to them. They knew something was going on. Something was clearly wrong with Christ. And physical exhaustion, physical stress is exhausting, but emotional stress is even more exhausting. I believe that those disciples wanted to be awake. But they couldn't. I don't think this was that they didn't want to go there with him or be there. This was they couldn't. And part of that was because Jesus had to do it alone. But again, he wasn't alone. He was with God, his Father. We also see, so we see ultimately we can't put our full trust in any individual. But we also see ultimately we can't fully trust ourselves either. I think, we're, I think we know this one, unfortunately. Because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now that's not an excuse for us not walking in the Spirit. Because if you 1 Corinthians 10, 12 to 13. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. We are in a very dangerous place when we think we got it together. Because we are just setting ourselves up to fall. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. What's he going to provide? He's going to provide an escape for us. But again, we talked about this verse before. He provides it. He equips us to take it. But we have to make that choice of taking it. 
And why is that choice hard? I mean, it seems so simple. If a building is on fire and there's a door marked exit, which legally there has to be, you would run out of it. I would run out of it as fast as I can. But when we're in the middle of temptation, we don't always do that. Why? Because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We can't trust in ourselves. We need to trust in our God. Something we see in Christ's prayer that we have seen again and again and again. He was persistent in his prayer. Did you see? He went back three times. He prayed the same thing three times. And the first time we know for sure he prayed at least an hour. We don't know how long he prayed all of the times. But we know for sure that he prayed at least an hour. This was a deep struggle. Jesus was wrestling in prayer with God. Because Jesus knew what he had to do, and he didn't want to do it. And all of his emotions were getting in the way of everything. Can you relate to that? Where we know what we're supposed to do, or sometimes we know what we're not supposed to do. And we're just struggling with God because we're just, it's a battle. It's a battle. But we need to keep it before him and not just advocate, not just surrender, not just put up a white flag and say, well, you know, this is too hard. Because if Christ had done that, where would we be? None of us would be here learning about, talking about him, because we'd all be on the road to eternal destruction if Jesus hadn't gone to that cross. I think it is really intriguing that after each time Jesus prayed, he went back to his friends. See, Jesus was human, and he wanted their support. He had the support of his Father, which is the primary, but he wanted that support, and they were not there for him. That just breaks my heart, and it must have broken their hearts. I mean, I'm sure God gave them the grace to let go of that, but can you imagine how terrible they felt when they woke up and they realized, wow, we totally blew that. We totally weren't there for him. But grace covers that. Because sometimes we're not there for people that we should be. And sometimes it's because we've made poor decisions and we need to confess that. But that's not something that the enemy can hold over our head because it is done in Christ. This passage of scripture ends with answered prayer. It ends with God answering Christ's prayer. Now how? 